Yeah. But within that, you've got different versions. Yeah, let's got, use that. We you've can got use Hiktal, it. you've got Yusuf Ali, etc. Um, now, I know I know Muslims don't like to call it a translation, it's a transliteration of the meaning, etc. That's fine. But, from my perspective, <laughs> basically the same with both books. Let me try and bring another angle at it. Because, for example, you know, you could have people like ISIS, for example, they could come and attribute their actions and their beliefs and say, oh, we are Muslim and what we do represents Islam, but we don't take from them. We don't identify them as Muslim. This is interpretation. Interpretation now, yeah? Secondly, all right, let's go to let's bring an analogy. If, for instance, all of the Quran and all of the Bible were wiped, to, wiped away from this earth, yeah? and uh, you were, and we found the most knowledgeable Christians in the world, and we said, get together the Bible as it was, they would have a bit of a problem doing that. Would they not? I mean, they would have so, so, so many different. I think to memorize. But I mean, I mean, unless we see it, it's really good. It but what we could do? With that, I, I know this. Yeah. I mean, I've researched it. I've never found it yet. Yeah. Um, with the Quran, however, you can get a three-year-old kid in any country in the world, a three-year-old son that can actually bring the Quran back to its original text from Arabic language. That's fine. So they can bring the Quran back to where it was gone, but you can't do that. It's a nice party trick, but the Bible, the manuscripts haven't disappeared. It's all more theoretical. But again, the text of the Bible has not changed. Even in Jeremiah 8, it says that clearly. How can we say we are wise and we have the wrong Lord? When actually the line kind of describes it's actually the false. This is a prophet that you take, that we take also. So I mean, if, if, if a prophet himself in the Bible is saying that the biblical text has changed, some of the some of the scholars, the, the general consensus of the scholars have identified and accepted the truth and the fact that the biblical scriptures have been edited and changed and that they are no longer the word that came from God, the Father in heaven. Yeah? Wait, no, no, that's, 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 that brings me to my original question from like, I don't know, it's really nice back in the video where I said, how can you believe in a book that has been edited? Okay, okay. Uh, Jeremiah 8 is a huge question. question. I don't know much about this verse. You're much better off finding out about it. But from what I studied in this book, and the best explanation I saw was, the scribes back then, they had more, their function was not simply to copy the manuscripts in the Bible, it was also to interpret the manuscripts, and that was the interpretation. And therefore, what this is talking about is a distribution of the script Even if it was changed in the text itself, I think elsewhere in Jeremiah, there are hints that the law still continues, because God tells people to obey the law, so they must not it. I think also, Jeremiah may have had a copy of self, and that could have been reproduced. So, I don't think Jeremiah 8, 8 is saying that the, the Torah has been lost or either has been lost at all or it has been lost at all. I mean, interestingly yeah, enough, what that's, that's about all I know of that. So, interestingly enough, Richard, yeah, and I mean... Sorry, can I just stop a second? Just, just before I forget. In terms of what most scholars would say, um, I know the New Testament better. Old Testament textual history is much more trouble. Um, but with the New Testament, as I said, I think New Testament scholars generally, they don't consider an issue. Yes, the odd words here and there, by and large, the message of the Testament is pretty clear, and the textual history is very good. Okay, so I mean, which lead me to another point. A lot of the time, what Christians yeah. tend to do is talk about a theoretical or their own understanding of understanding the verses, and, and, and you hear something very commonly, especially in Speaker's Corner, that in order to understand the biblical verses, you must have the Holy Spirit inside you, so the famous Holy Spirit shield, yeah? Which you will notice, I I know, and I applaud you for that, you're a smart man. I know you're a smart man for not going down that route. I'll bring up my poison and say, yeah, Joe. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's another matter. That people say, all right, you don't test God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, 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 that's uh, I mean, what I think. Yes. Think you think you You've actually referenced it in one of my videos. I think that's how we came into contact with each other. He referenced me in one of my videos, and that's how we started talking about my sister against the Christians. Just put it here. That's why the Christians are there watching this video like No, 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 just say it like, screw it, clip, hold it like that, then you screw it. Like, Very nice. Then the other end is saying like that. You always offer me perfume. Hold on to the umbrella. One day she's going to ask me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, as a, not as a Muslim, but yeah.
Um, so, what would I like to do? Lift this up there, because I know you said you have to go so just to touch on something. So, we spoke I mean, like, a little bit. I can stay as well as I got energy. I actually need yeah, No, I actually need to leave before that, because I haven't played Mark of and the sun's already set. Yeah, but thank you so much, because I would feel too shy to ask you to wait around for me when I'm here. So, what I'd like to do is we spoke a bit about New, new Testament and the doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. Even Jesus himself professed that he doesn't have his own doctrine. So, I think Jesus, obviously, he has a doctrine on there. Because he said that this is the doctrine of the Father. Yeah, I think he teaches nothing separate from the Father. He teaches nothing separate from the Father. I like it. I like it. So, what I would like to do then is speak to you about something. I did mention it earlier, but obviously we had to go for our last prayer. So, let's go back to Genesis. So, the Lord, and this is Genesis 6 5, so the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and every inclination of the human heart was all evil all the time. The Lord regret that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. So just a couple of points to commentate on here. Can I just say, are these the same points you discussed in the other No, I'm all the Yes. I would just like to speak about one point. That's fine. It's something that we did mention, but we didn't go into that. And it goes back to the context of this video. We spoke about the attributes of God. Yes, you and I, we have a different approach to God. We mentioned that earlier. But that may come out later. So, I mean, when I asked you before, do you agree that God is the most powerful? And it only took you. No, I didn't ask you that. I don't think you did. Beg your pardon. I think you're about to. I think I'm going to speak this too. I could be mistaken. You asked Eric. I asked Eric. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Do you believe that God is free from any defects and from any insufficiency and free from any weakness? I believe in all those attributes of God insofar as scripture affirms them. So we would have to look at scripture to see which of those are affirmed and in how those attributes are understood. So for me it's very important, I think this is where Christians and Muslims have a fundamentally different approach. For me it's very important to say, let the Bible define God rather than using philosophical constructs to define God and then interpret the text in the light of those. I don't, I don't reject at all what you've just said about let your scripture define who the God is. Yeah. So, for, example, surely... for example, people say that a, an attribute of God is immutable. Immutability. I'm immutability. Mutability. Oh. Sorry, immutability. Oh, immutability. God does not change. I'm quite open to that concept, but <laughs> all it's more influenced by kind of Greco-Roman philosophical constructs than the Bible. Some philosophers these days, the 20th century onwards, are actually saying maybe God is mutable. And at the very least, even if uh, God is immutable, it is in such a way that allows for the incarnation. Do you see what I mean? So these attributes must be understood within the, the entire biblical framework. Otherwise, I cannot affirm because for me, the scripture comes to the Okay, so, I mean, the point that I was going to make upon this video, and we'll see if you, can, if you can unpack it, that would be great. So, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become, etc, etc. We went through that. Okay, so Genesis 6-6, six, six, yeah? This is very profound. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on earth and his heart was deeply troubled. So, let's talk about regret in itself. And this is something that I did want to open with you. Regret is a human, a human emotion, is it not? It's a human so, so the, emotion. Que the question is, what exactly do you mean by regret? Yes. Um, we did actually talk about this in the video. Yeah, but I said I want to... Okay, we'll go further. Um, if we can. As I think I was saying in the other video... So the Hebrew word first and foremost the is... I believe is it could be Naham, but I think it's Naham. So I think it's fun. Um, and I think that the mean, I think there are a few different meanings. One of them may be, oops, I did something wrong. Let's, let's go through them. There's three meanings. Okay, you I, may know better than I, I was educated by one of the Israelites. Okay. Okay. So the first one is sorrow. The, first, the second one is regret. Regret to himself. And then the third one he said was 
Nevertheless, the ones that he said, and you know, we leave it to you guys at home. I mean, we could go on the internet, but we don't want to stall you. Um, they are all human emotions. They are all human attributes. Now, when we are attributing abilities to God. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, what do you mean by human attributes? Do you mean attributes that human have or that only human Okay, so for example, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You've corrected me in, in the terminology. Yeah, there are some attributes that God has that human beings can have a, uh, a certain element upon themselves. For example, God is the all merciful, but as human beings we can have mercy with each other. But God is the all merciful, Ar Rahim, the all. You know, it's a very distinct. A, a big distinction made between God and creation in the ability itself. Yeah. But then there are some that are just for human beings and that it wouldn't befit his majesty, majesty if he had them upon himself. Like for example, does this first fit? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean, of course it doesn't fit that. Sure. The Lord regrets it. All right, sure. Okay, let's go again. Yeah? So, Genesis 6 5, the Lord saw wickedness. Genesis 6 6, he regretted that he had made the human beings that had then gone to commit their wicked acts. So, Genesis 6 7, he's come to a conclusion and he said, and he quotes, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created within the animals, the birds, and the creatures. And he's actually given a reason for this conclusion because for I regret that I have made them. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> so the, the question I, can't is be, I can't be cocky with the, you. Anyway. The question is how we understand it, not how. It Let's could be understood as God created them. He thought it was all going to work out okay. It didn't work out okay. Whoops, I made a mistake. I regret that mistake. It could be God created them. Things went bad. He was sorry that he had done that, so he rectifies that with the flood. That latter interpretation is one I would prefer, and there's no conflict there between the understanding of God and his being all perfect. I don't quite see the issue. Because I, I don't believe it. So, so the key issue there would be is it right for God to be sad at the presence of sin? I would say yes. As Christians, we believe God is loving. It is natural when you are a loving being to be sad or upset when bad things happen. So for me, actually, this is very fitting to a loving, perfect God. You know what, Richard? I want to say something just to end this, because I know you need to go. You probably need to go after me. I do need to go and pray my prayer because it's really, getting, it's really bad for me. But I will say that I really appreciate it. I want to narrate something to the viewers as well. And it's in an unpatronizing way. If you want to know more about it, then you can always ask me as well. Yeah. And there's one individual in history that you remind me of. Okay. Yeah, in history. And I'm talking 1400 years ago. No pun intended, I promise you. Yeah? No low blows, okay? When I think of Richard, I always think of Abu Talib. Really? So Abu Talib was a man. It's a compliment in a way. It's a compliment in a way. I hope you take it in a way of compliment, yeah? There's no, there's no low blows with me. I you. So Abu Talib was a man who was very, who was known for his piety. He was the direct uncle of our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was a man that protected his nephew. He gave charity. He never became a Muslim, and on his deathbed, he actually professed that he believes in the gods of his culture, yeah, and not that there's one deity worthy of worship. And that's Allah. He was a man that was exposed to pure Islamic monotheism, yeah. Just as obviously when you're here and you speak to us, you are so exposed to pure Islamic I would say you're a very good ambassador. Uh, bro, I don't think so. <laughs> we can all be better, man. But thank you very much. Thank you so much. You know? um, we can never grow more food, believe we're at our peak. You know? But one thing I would say, why are you reminding me of that? It's because you come with good mannerisms about yourself. I like you as an individual. I genuinely like you as a person. And that's why I wanted to stand in front of the camera and speak to you today. You know? Because I knew it was going to be something tasteful and respectful for our viewers to see. Yeah? Um, and I don't think in any way, shape, form or manner, as a person with your characteristics, that you will be in contrary to Islamic characteristic expectations of Islamic characteristics. You know? But Abu Talib himself, and Allah our Lord tells us, 
through yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. and because of what he's done as well that he will through God's mercy through Allah's mercy he will have a flame that when it touches the bottom of the sole of his feet will boil his brains now of course you have your faith and all, all my, I can do as a Muslim here is to convey the message what I believe is true the convincing is between you and your Lord yeah but then I would love to send you some material about monotheism in Islam and even if it doesn't mean it will go to break down your faith as a Christian at least you will have that knowledge about something that you didn't before and you can speak to us more about it and it's basically about the oneness of Allah the totally in itself you know so the opposite of Trinitarian belief and I honestly honest to God in my prayer right now I'm going to be making a dua for you a prayer for you hoping that you are guided towards the truth and obviously if I'm yeah obviously if I'm not upon the truth then I expect you to guide me towards it as well but Richard it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you and I hope we do it again because this is always educational for me when I speak to you I'm going to be in hospital soon so for the viewers as well inshallah on the 28th of February I'm going to go in for some uh, really big surgery really serious surgery uh, obviously there's not 100% chance with anything that is going to work but please uh, remember me in your du'as inshallah and uh, if the Christians watching it's pray <laughs> but inshallah please remember me in your du'as and remember that there's nothing in this life that is definitive or that comes except death. Death is the one thing that does come, inshallah. So uh, it's something that is a, a humbling experience for all of us, whether it is ourselves that we know that we are experiencing pain. Or when we see pain and death, it's experienced by others. And then it's just a reminder for ourselves. But anyway, while we are still here, we call to what, to what we, we believe is true. And that's why we're here on a weekly basis, every Sunday to vocalize our Iman, our faith. And and we go and we pray as well for those to come towards truth and I pray for Richard to become a Muslim inshallah if he doesn't then I leave it between him and his Lord but Richard you've been a stand-up guy man thank you very much God bless you inshallah, inshallah Richard will be a Muslim one day inshallah. Richard thanks a lot my friend I'm gonna go pray yeah Salam alaikum Hi there Take your shahada Take your shahada Take your shahada Take your shahada You've got to persuade me كنز الكرم مولى النعم هذه الأمم بشريعته كنز الكرم مولى النعم هذه الأمم بشريعته